In this example, we are going to calculate the break-even point where the company sells more than one product. So we have information relating to Batson Limited, and Batson Limited manufactures bicycles and tricycles, so two different products. The following budgeted information is available for the 20x9 financial year. So first we have direct material. So guys, as we go through the information provided, let's identify which costs are fixed, which are variable, and which are semi-variable. So obviously direct material is going to be a variable cost. Direct labor is also a variable cost because you've been specifically told that it is direct. Variable manufacturing overheads are obviously variable costs. Sales commission is going to vary with the number of units sold. So that is also a variable cost. We then have the selling price per unit and also the sales volume. You then have other budgeted costs for the 20x9 year. We have fixed manufacturing overheads, so that cost is obviously fixed. And we have fixed selling and admin costs, and that's also obviously fixed. All right, so quite straightforward in this question. I didn't want to confuse the calculation with semi-variable costs or anything like that. Instead, this example is to show you how to deal with a situation where we have a company that sells more than one product. So in the first part of the required, you need to calculate the break-even point in units for the 20x9 financial year. So how do we calculate the break-even point in units? We take total fixed costs and we divide by the contribution per unit. So first we need to calculate total fixed costs. And this is a very straightforward calculation. You have the fixed costs above from the information provided in the question, so you can just bring those down. We have fixed manufacturing overheads of 580,000 Rand and fixed selling and admin costs of 320,000 Rand. So we have total fixed costs of 900,000 Rand. So that calculation has been performed. We now need to calculate the contribution per unit. And remember, we calculate the contribution per unit by taking the selling price per unit and deducting the variable costs per unit. So guys, all of this information was provided in the question. It's very straightforward, so I don't want to waste too much time on this. You shouldn't have any problems with this part of the calculation. Take the selling price per unit as it's provided, deduct all of the variable costs, and calculate the contribution per unit for each product. Now, the problem that we are facing in this question is we now have two different contributions per unit because this company sells two different products. So what are we going to use in our calculation for the break-even point? What are we going to use as the contribution per unit? Go back to your assumptions of cost, volume, profit analysis. Remember the assumption that we make if more than one product is sold. If more than one product is sold, we assume that the sales mix remains constant. So go back to the information provided in the question. Here's your sales volume. They expect to sell 15,000 bicycles and 18,000 tricycles. That sales mix will remain constant. And we are going to use that sales mix to calculate a weighted contribution per unit. So please note where the company sells more than one product, you are going to calculate a weighted contribution per unit using the sales mix. Please note guys, if you are provided with both sales volumes and also production volumes, you should not use production volumes in this calculation. You should use the sales mix or the sales volumes. Go back to your assumptions. The assumption is the sales mix remains constant. So you always use sales volumes in this calculation and not production volumes. You'll see that note a little bit later in your lecture notes over here. So when performing this calculation, you must use sales units and not production units because the assumption is that the sales mix remains constant, okay, not the production mix. So it won't have an effect in this question because you weren't given production units, but just be careful. If you are given production units, you must use the sales units. So first I want you to calculate the total sales volume. 
So they expect to sell 15,000 bicycles and 18,000 tricycles. So that's a total of 33,000 units. That is our sales mix and that is going to remain constant. So using that, calculate a weighted contribution. So what do you do? You take the contribution per unit for bicycles and you multiply by 15,000 and divide by 33,000. You take the contribution per unit for tricycles and you multiply by 18,000 and divide by 33,000 units. And you calculate a weighted contribution. As an alternative, instead of performing the calculation like that, what you could do is you can first calculate total contribution and then divide by the total sales volume. So what you do is you take this contribution per unit and you multiply by the number of units so that you can get the total contribution. Do the same thing for tricycles. Take the contribution per unit, multiply by the number of units, get the contribution in total. So calculate total contribution. Then divide by the total sales volume, which we also calculated previously, the 33,000 units over here. And that will give you exactly the same answer. So you can see it's not a complicated calculation. You just need to know how to deal with a situation like this. Once you've seen one example, you should be able to deal with this. So we can now wrap this up. How do we calculate our break-even points in units? Take the total fixed cost that you calculated, divide by the weighted contribution per unit, and calculate the break-even point in units. Once again, guys, please remember you always need to round up to the nearest whole number, otherwise the company will make a small loss. Then, what we've done now is we've calculated the total break-even point for Batson Limited. You now need to split this between the two products so that we know how many bicycles and how many tricycles they need to sell. So you take the break-even point that you calculated above, and using the same sales mix, you split that between the two products. So for bicycles, we multiply by 15,000 and divide by 33,000 units. And for tricycles, we multiply by 18,000 and divide by 33,000 units. So you use the sales mix to apportion or to split this break-even point between the two products. Now, before we move on, I want you to go back to the information provided in the question. These fixed costs that we were given over here are referred to as common fixed costs. And I know they are common fixed costs because they relate to both products. We don't know what portion of this cost relates specifically to bicycles or tricycles. We just know that in total, these are the fixed costs of Batson Limited. Guys, a common mistake made by students is they try and split the fixed cost over here between the two different products and then perform two separate break-even calculations. That is not correct. Where you are given common fixed costs that relate to both products, first what you need to do is you calculate the break-even point for the company as a whole, then using the sales mix, you split that break-even point between the two different products, just as we did in part one of the required. Please, you should not try and split these fixed costs between the two different products and perform two separate break-even calculations. That is incorrect. However, what you do need to be aware of is you might have a situation where in the question, they give you the fixed cost that specifically relate to bicycles, and then you are also given the fixed costs that specifically relate to tricycles. So you are not given common fixed costs, but instead you are given fixed costs that are directly attributable to, to each of the products. So we know exactly what fixed cost relates to bicycles and what relates to tricycles. If you are given fixed costs that are directly attributable to products, so in other words, there are no common fixed costs, then it is correct to perform two separate break-even calculations. All right, so please just note that that's extremely important, and you'll see the discussion over there.
Then in part two of the required, you need to calculate the break-even sales value for the 20x9 financial year. So we are now calculating the break-even point in rent. So guys, your total fixed costs won't change if we just jump to the calculation over here. When calculating break-even point in rands, we take total fixed costs and we divide by the contribution margin. Total fixed costs will not change. However, we do just need to calculate the contribution margin. And remember, the contribution margin is just contribution divided by sales. Now, because the company sells two different products, you need to calculate this in total. So what we need to do is first we need to calculate total contribution. So previously we already calculated the contribution per unit. So just take the contribution per unit and multiply by the number of units to get the contribution in total. And perform the same calculation for tricycles. Add those together so that you can get the total contribution. If we want the contribution margin, we need to take the total contribution and divide by total sales. So now we need to calculate total sales. So just take the selling price per unit and multiply by the number of units so that you can get total sales. And the same calculation for tricycles. Take the selling price per unit, multiply by the number of units and calculate total sales. Then just add those together so that you can get the total sales value for Batson Limited. All right, and then we calculate the contribution margin by taking the total contribution, dividing by the total sales value, and that will give you your contribution margin. And you can then wrap this up and you can calculate the break-even point in rands, take the total fixed cost, divide by the contribution margin, and get the break-even point in rands. Now please note, guys, you've calculated the break-even point for Batson Limited as a whole. We now need to take that break-even point and split it between the two different products. So what is the break-even point for bicycles and for tricycles? So take the amount that you calculated above. And now please note, guys, we are working with the break-even point in rands, not the break-even point in units. So when you are apportioning this between the two different products, you need to apportion this still using your sales mix, but you are not using the sales units. You need to use the rand value of your sales. So here's the rand value of my sales for bicycles and the rand value of my sales for tricycles and then obviously the total rand value. So please note guys, when you are calculating the break even point in rands and you are splitting that between the two different products, you need to apportion this using the sales mix but you are not using sales units, it is the rand value of sales. And this is different to the break-even point in units calculation because over here when we were apportioning the break-even point in units between the two different products, we used the sales mix in units. So our sales units to apportion the break-even point between the two products. Alright, so guys, just always think about it logically, follow simple logic. Obviously, if we are working with units, you need to apportion the break-even point using sales units. On the other hand, if we are working with RAND or RAND values, you need to apportion the break-even point in RANDs between the two different products using the RAND value of sales. Then in part three of the required. The total sales demand cannot be increased above 33,000 units without decreasing the current selling price. In an effort to boost profits, the marketing manager has suggested that his team rather promotes the sale of bicycles with the higher selling price per unit. The management accountant disagrees with this logic and instead believes that the sale of tricycles should be promoted. 
All right, now I want you to go back to the calculation that we performed on the previous page because this discussion will make a lot more sense if we link it to the numbers. So the marketing manager believes that because bicycles have a higher selling price per unit, if the company wants to boost their profits, they should focus on selling more bicycles. On the other hand, we saw the management accountant disagrees with this logic, and he believes that they should promote the sale of tricycles. Now, the mistake that the marketing manager is making is he's ignoring the variable costs associated to each product, and he's just focusing on the product that has a higher selling price per unit. If we want to determine what the company should do in order to boost their profits, we should be looking at the contribution per unit, because the contribution per unit tells us the profit that the company will earn for every unit that is sold in excess of the break-even point. So what do I mean by that? Let's discuss this in more detail. Bicycles have a contribution of 370 Rand per unit. That means for every unit that is sold above the break-even point. So for every unit in excess of the break-even point, the company will make a profit of 370 Rand. On the other hand, tricycles have a contribution of 430 Rand per unit. So for every tricycle that is sold in excess of the break-even point, the company will make a profit of 430 Rand per unit. So it's incorrect to focus on the selling price per unit in order to boost profits. If we want to boost profits, we need to focus on the contribution per unit, and they should sell more of the product that has a higher contribution per unit. So the marketing manager is incorrect, and the management accountant is Correct, obviously, because that's his area of expertise. All right, guys, so you can read through everything over there in the suggested solution. I have discussed all of those points.